What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of Zero Mile ADV. Let's talk about something a little bit different today. A video I've gotten a decent amount of requests for um, that I have mentioned that I should do a video on. I'm going to do a video on it. It's not sponsored, it's my honest feedback. So with that, let's get into it. Today, we are going to talk about, do a little costume change. The Flying Eyes Motorcycle Glasses. <laughs> so a lot of people have seen me wear these, of course, anytime I'm shooting a video out. Um, I'm usually wearing these. I wore these on the entire Colorado BDR. I think that they, uh, so far they've been really good. So let's talk about the things that I like about them and some of the things that maybe I think could be improved or maybe a little bit better. Okay, first things first with these glasses. Some of the things that I like is the lenses themselves actually seem to be pretty tough. One thing that's a pain wearing glasses and, and doing motorcycle stuff is you have to take them on and off like to put your helmet on. With these, the lenses seem to help, seem to hold up pretty good. I did drop them uh, before I had to get a better system on the BDR and I slightly stepped on them. And that's the only reason I kind of have any scuffs on them. So the lenses themselves, the lenses that they're using in their prescription process seems to be pretty good. I didn't do transition lenses or anything like that because my visor that I have was tinted. So I just wanted to be able to see. And yeah, so the lenses themselves seem to, seem to hold up pretty good. Another thing that um, I like about them really, and I think is probably the biggest selling benefit are the sides. It makes it super easy to get your glasses in and out of your helmet. So when you're wearing glasses, if you're like, for all of you out there that probably do, one of the biggest struggles is getting your glasses inside the helmet. So like actually getting them like behind your ears. So I have other wire, wire glasses, like those Oakleys are thick. It's really hard like a lot of times you're like, if I don't, if I didn't, before I had these, like it would like one arm would just like stick over my ear because of the way like the pressure in the helmet is. I've tried a bunch of different helmets. Didn't really seem to matter. With these though, they just slid like, right in. Like every time they slide right in, there's no problems. I don't have any problems with them getting them on and off the helmet, which is probably the best aspect of it. The other thing, like with the arms, I think it's the arms that probably make the biggest difference is that they, it doesn't create a lot of pressure. So before when I had these, I did a big ride on my Ducati Multistrada V4S. It's like the first big ride I'd ever done on my adventure bike. And I basically rode over the mountains from basically the Western slope to Denver and then back. It's pretty much a lot of highways, some side roads, but like, you know, it's 250 miles in decent amount of traffic. So it's kind of like a half day ride one way, maybe kind of a full day ride one way if you're stopping a decent amount to stretch. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and then wearing the helmet, like with traditional glasses, I would, I got a lot of pressure, you know, especially on the next day coming back, like my, ears and face were getting a little sore from the pressure that the helmet was putting on the thicker sides of the glasses and then kind of in the side of my face. With these, because they're so thin and light and they are so, the way they're kind of art, I wore I wear them all the time and my glasses is probably the like least of my problems or worries when it comes to like big rides. And like I said, I wore these on the entire Colorado BDR I didn't have any problems. A lot of days, you know, a lot of days, like section two, which I've talked a lot about with my visor up, getting a lot of dust, because it's very, very dusty. Um, and I carried some wet wipes, didn't have any problems cleaning them or being able to see. And so that was probably, yeah, probably, those are probably the two favorite things for me was basically the um, strength of them, whatever material they're using, but I'm sure you can get stronger ones, they didn't really seem to scratch that easy. They held up really well with some hard abuse and basically the arm design makes them super, super um, functional. With that, my prescription changed just so slightly. So I do need new glasses. I could still wear one of these, it's just this one changed, my left eye just changed a little bit. So like, I think I could wear these without any problems. Um, but if I wanted to get this one back to correct, <laughs> the correct vision, I need to get a new, another pair. So. Like, will I get another pair? I don't know, let's talk about some of the downsides and some things that um, I maybe think could be improved. Okay, so one thing that um, on these ones, like if you're like me and you 
like diff wearing different styles of glasses. I've got a bunch of different glasses. I feel like if I'm gonna have glasses, I might as well have fun with it. When I was younger, I hated the fact that I had to wear glasses and you didn't want to be the geek. And now I'm like, just lean into it, embrace it, and just like have as many different cool styles and make, just have fun with it. And that's kind of my approach. So with these, I, um, I kind of was into the, the clear frame look. Now there was a point, I think my wife even called it out. She's like, what happened to those glasses? They're so yellow. Now, I thought that they had stained. So if we compare these to another pair of clear, just cheap Warby Parker frames that I got, and these Warby Parker frames, I've actually have skied in them. Um, I've, I used to ride, wear them on the motorcycle all the time. Like I've done a lot of stuff on them and they're still clear. So there's no sun fading in them. And so I had thought that these got really dirty and kind of like gross looking <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, but looking at the website, it actually appears that like they are kind of an off clear. So like not an off white, but like an off clear. So they are kind of like this dirtier clear color. Um, it appears that way on the website. So if I got new ones, I think I'd probably go back to the classic black and kind of bring, bring the whole black frame back. Like with my Oakleys, I, those are black frames. I've done the clear thing for a while, so maybe I'd switch it up. But uh, that was one thing is like, the clear that they're using could, I think should be like clear. Like, uh, as you can see with these Warby Parker frames, like they're clear and these are kind of like a dirty clear. It's one thing I didn't like. Uh, the second thing is they are expensive. Um, I think if, um, if, you didn't, if I didn't have vision insurance and I was going to pay outright for my Oakleys, the Oakleys I have, I have transition lenses. I now I'm officially old. <laughs> I need like a reading distance. Not very much though, like the reading, bifocal thing. Uh, so I have like progressive lenses, which are more expensive. Those ones are like that blue light reflective, like all of the best features you can get in an actual lens on these Oakleys. These right here. Um, I have kind of like all the best features. So transition lenses, all the stuff, progressive. So I don't have the hard line. I got two pairs. I got one bifocal, one, and one progressive. The progressive is better. <laughs> if, you, if you're new and you're thinking about the pro progressive is better, I'm going to switch my other ones to progressive. But um, these to actually purchase them outright were cheaper than these. And one unique thing that I didn't really like about the flying eye prescription process is like your eye doctor will measure your pupil distance, like where your pupils sit on your glasses. And so like as part of your prescription, there's like this pupil distance. I think mine's like 63, which is like pretty standard with all the other numbers. And so when you order glasses, like if you order them from anywhere else, it's just one value that you put in and you start ordering them. With these though, when I ordered them, I didn't enter in the pupil distance and they had you like try them on and then you have to have somebody like draw a black mark with a Sharpie on the frames and then mail them back. Just seems like a very inaccurate way to make sure the pupil distance is right. And with that being said, I did notice that these, like when you, whenever you get a new prescription, you feel that mild eye strain, like your eyes kind of like have to adjust to the way the light's now coming in because of the, the difference in the prescription. And th this prescription was the same as like five other pairs of glasses I had, but anytime I would switch to these, I would feel that initial eye strain for a first half a day. And then if I, like with the BDR, I wore these all day, every day, and so coming back and wearing my other glasses, I definitely got kind of that eye strain feel. And so um, I'm attributing it to this like non-scientific, like drawing on your pupils, right? Because what if I wasn't looking exactly straight? If I was like slightly looking off and didn't realize it, and that shifted the pupil mark here. And I don't know if they're just using that to verify or if they're like, that's how they're actually setting like your pupil distance. I'm not sure. Um, that was a downside because then you have to mail it back. So you already have to like, with the Oakleys, um, you know, we ordered them, I ordered these directly through, through Oakley and I got them made in like two days, like to my house in like three days, like with shipping and everything. So, um, yeah, not sure about that whole process. Didn't really like that very much, especially as expensive as they are. They're more expensive than I paid, would if, if I had to pay outright for those. And to do this kind of Sharpie marker thing and then mail them back just could be better in my opinion. Um, and then so the, yeah, the, the last piece would just be the cost. They are very expensive. I think these were a little bit over $500 um, for the prescription in the frame. And then you have like all this back and forth shipping. Not really, 
my kind of jam. If anything, I might just take these frames into my like local optometrist and have them just like cut new lenses for them for me and then pay the difference rather than going through this hole. Or because I did step on these and one arm is a little bit bent, I might just buy the frames outright and it would, might even be cheaper just to get lenses made with my local optometrist than having it through them. And they will actually use my actual prescription. I don't think we'll do this like whole Sharpie thing. So <laughs> that's my thoughts. Overall, I think they're great. Um, as far as like glasses for actually wearing a motorcycle, the functionality, everything has been great. I definitely would get the frames again. I think the design, the weight, everything is really good. A few minor complaints I think could be better. So if you wear glasses, definitely check into it. Uh, if you can afford it, I think it's a great way to go. I'm not, I don't think they work with insurance. So I'm not sure if you can like, like if your insurance will cover a pair of frames, you're like, well, I'm just gonna have one pair. I think that would be another downside. I'm not sure that they, they take that. But that's it. It's my thought on the flying eyes, motorcycle glasses. I'm not sponsored by them. As you can tell, I paid full price for them. So with that, stay safe out there.